In this video, we're going to be going over how to create a design such as this oak leaf effect here, using nothing more than a basic sketch to get started with. We'll be going over how to create each of the individual elements and then how to bring them all together and modify them to then create your final design here. So let's get started by closing down this design and going back to the starting window. So let's begin the project with creating a new file. And in this file, we're going to set it up so that the width is 12 inches. The height is going to be three inches and a thickness of 0.75. We'll keep it as a single sided job and we'll set the Z zero position to the material surface. We're going to set the XY datum position to the center for this project. And we'll keep the modeling resolution high as we're going to be using lots of 3D modeling in this project. Let's click OK to get to our drawing panel. And now we're ready to start. So now we're going to import a bitmap, which includes a sketch of our desired design. So let's go to the import bitmap option. And from here we have a, an example file which we've drawn previously and scanned into the computer. As you can see, it's part of a design. So I'm just going to place it on the workspace and scale it up using the transformation options here in the corners. Just get a better look at what we're working with here. And let's zoom in to show you what it looks like. So as you can see, we've got some oak leaves, some acorns, and then a branch component. And then we want to mirror the design and flip it to the opposite side to create a an identical copy on the other side. So we're going to want to make at least three components here, I think. One for the acorn, one for the leaf, and one for the stalk. When creating 3D modeling projects, it really helps to break it down into smaller components as possible, so that you do not have to spend additional time recreating certain components if you can just duplicate them by, for example, creating one acorn and then copying it to each location you want this acorn to be. So at this time, you'd start using the vector drawing tools to create the basic vectors that we're going to be using to create these. However, uh, as this video is going to be quite long as it is, we're going to skip this section and just import some existing vectors we've already created. Check any of our vector drawing tutorials to see more about how to use the vector drawing tools to create your vectors. I'm going to go up to the import vectors icon up here in the top left and use this to import our oak leaf vectors file. And if I select this and click open, you'll see we've imported some basic vectors. You can see our stalk, our oak leaf, and our acorn vectors here. Now, while I could start just creating my 3D components using these vectors here in our project, what we want to do is try and use up as much space as we can when creating 3D components. This allows the 3D component to use as many pixels as possible to get the highest quality results in our final 3D parts. If I was to create our leaf and only use a small section of the material space, which would have a negative impact on the final quality of our final design. So to work with this, what I'm going to do is select my oak leaf vectors here, use the edit copy option, and then I'm going to open up a second copy of Aspire. Here, I want to create a new file. I'm going to set the width to two inches, the height to two inches, and I'll keep the material thickness and all of our other settings the same as in our main project. I'll click OK. And now you can see we've got a small material space here in the center of our screen. I'm going to go to edit and paste. And you can see my vectors have been copied over from the first project into my second project. I'll press F9 to center them into our job space. And now we're ready to begin with making a 3D component. So we could start this by just making a basic raised leaf shape and then subtracting a vein shape from the middle of it. However, we want to put a bit more detail into this. So I think what we're going to be doing is we're going to uh, create a two rail sweep to give us a flowing leaf shape to start with. Then we're going to create a dished shape to give us a bit more of a uh, 3D shape to the internal size of the leaf. And then we'll create a 
vein component, which will then stick out from the leaf, which when combined should give us a much more detailed leaf component than a basic couple of 3D components would have achieved. To do this though, we are going to require a few new vectors to cre be created first, particularly for the two rail sweep, which will require at least two rails and some cross section vectors at the very least to be created first. So let's make those two rails to begin with. I'm just going to switch off all of the snapping options as I'm going to be doing a bit of freehand drawing here. I'm going to use the create polyline tool and then I'm just going to create a basic rail vector that's going to just sort of roughly follow the outside of this leaf. Um, as long as it doesn't go inside it, it doesn't really matter how I create this. So I'm just going to pull it down to the tip of the leaf here, press the space bar to end this line but keep the form open and then use this to draw the second line just like so. And you'll notice I've started both polylines from the top of the leaf. This is because we want to make sure that both of our rails that we create start at the same location rather than at the opposite ends. You can fix this later, but it saves time to just do this now. You can learn more about this in the two rail sweep guide. And we've ended our rails. So then I can right click to close the form and we've got our two rail vectors. Now, the, as these rails are quite sharp, we're going to just smooth them out. So to do this, we're going to use node editing with the node editing tool. If I click on this and then click onto one of my lines, you'll see all of the nodes are now visible. If I hover a mouse over one of my nodes, I can right click and use the smooth point option. As you can see, this has now turned it into a bezier curve and given us the bezier handles to work with. So we can adjust the smoothness and the curvature of each one of our lines as needed. Another option you can do is just hover the mouse over one of your nodes and press the S key on the keyboard. And this will automatically apply the smoothing for you without having to use the right click menu. So as you can see, I've created a nice smooth curvature to my line here. And you can just tweak and adjust this as needed to suit your final desired results. And then you can just move on to the second rail. So click it once again, and then just use the S key to add in all the smooths as required down the line. So let's just make a small tweak there. And I think that will be completely satisfactory for our next section. So I'm just going to right click to deselect my line and then I'll right click again to close node editing and get back my normal mouse pointer. So now I'm going to need a cross section vector to use with these two rails. And to do that, I'm going to want it to be a, a sloped dome which I'm going to use the ellipse tool to create this. So I'm going to click on the draw ellipse tool and I'm just going to type in uh, the coordinates I want it to appear at, which is going to be zero, zero. And then I'm going to set its size as uh, 0 0.3 inches for the width, 0 0.1 inches for the height. And then I can click create to create my vector. You'll see my small ellipse has appeared here in my design space. And then I'll just click close to exit out of the form. And I'm just going to click and drag this vec new vector over to the side so you can see it a bit more clearly. And now with it selected, I'm going to open node editing. And now I just want to delete the bottom two spans so that I only have the top half left. I can zoom in on it. And then I can mouse over one of the spans, right click and use delete span. And as you can see the span has now been cut out of the part. You can also use the D key. So I'm just going to mouse over the other span and press D. And as you can see, we now only have the top half remaining. So let's put these together and see what sort of results we're going to get from this. So I'm just going to select both of my rails, go to the modeling panel and click on two rail sweep. I'll use selection. And then I'm going to just select my cross section vector that I've created and click apply to show you the sort of results we're going to get. Let's open up both views so we can see them in action. And as you can see, we've got a general design here on the screen. It's not particularly interesting at the moment. Um, let's uh, scale this as well between the cross sections so that it will shrink the leaf as it reaches the tips. And I'll just show you that as well. Uh, there we go. So it's sort of a general leaf shape, but not, uh, not really what we're looking for at the moment. So let's make some adjustments to our cross section. So I'm just going to mouse over my cross section and press the N key to bring up the node editing. 
And I'm just going to make a few tweaks to this to, to give it a bit more of a lively shape. Uh, let's see, let's go with something a bit more like that. We'll zoom back out again and just press apply to see what this gives us. This is a bit more what we're looking for. This looks quite interesting. So we're going to keep this. So let's click on close. And that is now created our 3D component and it's separated now from our vectors we used to create it. So we can remove the vectors and it won't affect the component. And likewise, we can delete the component without affecting the vectors. And now we just want to select our 3D component and then hold shift and select the uh, oak leaf vector that we imported into the software. And then use the clear area of selected component outside selected vectors tool. And this will just remove everything that's part of that component that's outside of this vector line that we have. This only works with closed vectors, so it wouldn't have worked with our rails. So we needed to use this closed leaf vector that we have here. Okay, so now we want to start looking at making a second component. Now, to make sure that we don't get confused, let's rename this first component by right-clicking on it and using rename. And I'll just call this leaf1. Now, with the outline vector here selected, I'm just going to go to the Create Shapes tool. And we want to sort of add a bit more of a dish shape to the inside of the leaf. So let's use the, uh, the smooth profile that we have here. And we will have this set to uh, subtract from the previous components. We'll keep it with a, no base height and no limit on the final height. And we'll just click on Apply. As you can see, that's a bit more excessive than what we want to do. So let's try limiting some of this height. So we'll scale to an exact height. Let's put in a 0.02 height for this and click apply. As you can see, we've got quite a nice curve to the inside of the leaf now, which is what we're looking for. So this looks good. So let's rename this component to uh, leaf2 and click apply. Now we want to start a new component. So let's click on start new component. And then for this one, we're just going to use the, uh, the leaf vein that we have in the middle here. And for this one, we're going to use a curved profile and we'll use a no limit and we will have it as a positive component. So it's going to add, and we'll just call this one leaf three. Let's click apply. As you can see, we've got quite a good leaf vein going on here now. So let's click on close. And now you can see we've got our initial leaf design. It's a bit um, rough at the moment though, so we want to do some smoothing to this. So let's select all of our components. Holding shift on the keyboard and clicking each name in the component list allows me to select all the components. And then we're just going to apply a smoothing to them. As you can see, the software is warning me that it must bake these components into one component before it can then add a smooth to it. So we want to say OK to this. And now we can start choosing how much smoothing we want to apply to this. We want to make sure that we preserve the transparency so that we maintain this edge. And we'll just try out a few different amounts of smoothing. So 50% gives us quite a good look. But let's go a little bit higher. And we've got our basic leaf design here now. So we can click OK. And that has now fixed that as the final component for our leaf. And now we want to try and pull this across into our the Aspire project that we have open. I'm just going to rename this leaf one more time because as you can see, baking it adds the word baked into the name, which we don't want in our next project. So I'm just going to rename this back to leaf. And then with it selected, right click it and use the copy command. Now I'm just going to go back to my other Aspire. And now what, now that I'm in here, I can just right click again and use paste. And as you can see, the 3D component has appeared in my project ready to use and fits nicely within the vector that I had already created. So I'll push that to the side for the moment. And then we're going to look at doing the acorn next. So let's start off by working out how large of a project we're going to need to use to create this acorn design. So if I just select the stalk, 
and the largest of the vectors making up the acorn. Down in the bottom corner here, you can see that we have a width of 0.87 and a height of 1.0. So we want to have a job size of just over uh, an inch in both X and Y to create this 3D model to make the most of the material space that we'll be using. So now that we know that, let's just select the vectors that we're going to want to copy across. So going from the left to the right, I'll drag a box across the acorn vectors to select all of these vectors and nothing else. I can then use the right click and copy command. And then I can just open up another copy of Aspire and create a new file to start working. So let's make this 1.1 by 1.1 and we'll leave all the other commands as the same. We'll click OK. And then I just need to right click and use paste. And our acorn has imported in. However, as it's uh, imported into the original location compared to the X, Y axis, it's actually just off to the side of the screen here. So I'm just going to select the vectors for this and press F9 to put them into the center of my job space. Let's zoom in on this, and now we're ready to start making some 3D components. As before, we want to break this down into smaller chunks so that we can create each component separately to create our desired overall effect. We'll start by creating a couple of the most basic parts of this design. First off will be the stalk, which will just require selecting the vector, going to the modeling panel and using create shape, and then we'll just use the curved profile and we'll have a fairly steep angle on the side here. So let's put this up to uh, 80 degrees and we'll have no base height and no limit on the final height as well. And we'll have it just set to merge with all the com other components which we're going to make later. We'll just change the name to Stalk. Click Apply to make sure that it all looks good and we'll switch to the double view so we can just double check that. And that looks fine to me. So we'll just then create a new component. And this time we're going to select the largest of the nut sections. Again, we're just going to use the exact same settings without changing anything else. And we'll just change the name to nut. Click apply. You can see we've got our basic acorn there. So the next component, I'm just going to close this for the moment and hide our two previous ones. And then I'm going to select this roundish oval here. And I'm just going to do exactly the same as I've done before. And using a create shape with an angle of 80, no base height, no, no limit to the final height. And I'll just set this to merge. And I'm just going to call this shell and click apply. Now we've got this large dome section here now, but we won't want all of this. So we're going to close out from the create shape tool and we're going to select this oval vector here, which is the outline of our shell part. And we're going to use this as well as our shell component. And like we did before, we're going to use the clear area of selected component outside of selected vectors. And that will take a chunk out of our shell. And now when I unhide the other two components, you can see we've got our basic acorn design there nice and quickly and easily. Uh, let's go for an angled view just to get a look at that ridge. So this is looking very promising. Now we just want to add a little bit more detail by adding in some of these slotted lines here. I'm just going to hold shift and select each one of these. So that way I can have all of them create a single component together. And with those selected, I'm just going to create my shape as before. And then I'm going to make them slightly shallower. So let's pull this down to say 25 degrees. And then we're going to have this turn into a subtract component. And as you can see in the 3D view, we've now got these lines appearing in our design. Let's up that slightly actually. Let's put that up to 45 degrees and click apply. There we go, that's looking pretty promising. So now I can close out of the 3D modeling tool, select all of my components by clicking on the names in the component list and holding shift for each one. And then I can use the smoothing tool 
which allows me to bake the components together before I continue, which I'll say yes to. And just like before, I can apply a bit of a smoothing to give myself one single final piece, which I'll just click OK to. I want a maximum smooth on this one. And then I can just rename my component. And I'm just going to call this Acorn. And with it renamed, I'm just going to select it, right click it and use copy. And then I shall move back to my original project file of Aspire and then right click and use paste to put it into the project. So now you can see in my modeling list, I now have my acorn and my leaf. So now that we have both of these components in our main project of Aspire, I'm just going to align them with the vectors that are already in the project. So if I have the acorn selected, I'll hold shift and just click on the seed vector for the acorn here. And then in the transform object sections of the modeling panel, I can use the align selected vectors. And then I'm just going to have the uh, align to selection. So the align selected object is the last item in the selection, which was the vector here. And I'm just going to select the inside edge for the left hand side and then the bottom. And there we go, we've aligned the 3D component of the acorn with the original vectors that were used to create it. Next, I will select the leaf clip art that I've created, hold shift and select the vector of my leaf. And then I shall have it uh, aligned to the center. So the clip art will align to the center of the vector. And there we go, it's overlapping very nicely there for me. And let's now close out of the alignment tool. And then we can now move on to creating our twig. Now, as this component is going to be relatively simple without any detail and is going to be a bit more of a background component, I'm not going to worry about moving this off to a separate project to create on its own. I'm just going to create it here directly within this version of the Aspire software. So I shall select the vector, go to create a shape, and I'm just going to, like before, use the curved profile with a 45 degree angle no base height and no height limit. And I'm going to set it to make sure that it merges because it's going to be interacting with a lot of other components and I don't want it causing them to stand on top of it at strange angles. I want them to blend together nicely. And we're just going to change the name to Twig and click Apply. Let's switch to the double view. And as you can see, they're blending together quite well there but we'll need to do a bit more work to get an ideal finish from this. So let's move on to that next. Let's close out of the Create Shape tool and just get ourselves back into a nice top-down view. So now I want to copy uh, the leaf and the acorn a number of times to fit the numbers that are on my original design. What I can do is when I select the bitmap, I can right-click on it and use the object properties and then I can choose how much it fades when it's not selected. Uh, if we reduce this and I click close, you can see that I can see a bit more clearly without having to select the bitmap. I'm also just going to resize this bitmap to fit the vectors that I have imported here. So if I just select my bitmap and then I can use the set size tool, and I'm just going to change the size in the uh, width to 12 inches to match my job and click apply. And then if I press F9 on the keyboard, it will center in the workspace for me. So let's close out of the set size tool and unselect my bitmap. I can then select both the leaf and the acorn by holding the shift key. And then if I hold the control key and the alt key together, when I then bring up the transformation handles by clicking on the acorn again, I can then drag my leaf and my acorn sideways and it's locked to the axis that I'm currently working on. So as you can see, I can't move up and down right now, but if I move back to the middle, it locks back onto the Y axis and I can, then I can't move left and right. So let's lock onto the X axis and drag it to roughly where the leaf is going to be in my drawing. And when I let go, you can see it's now created a duplicate for me. Now, if I hold the shift key, I can then click the acorn again to unselect that from my group. And then I can click on my leaf to bring back the transformation handles and then hold the control and the alt key once again. 
and drag this across to create another copy. As you can see in the 3D view, I now have my three leaves. And I'm going to do one more copy for the end leaf here. So again, I'm just going to hold Control and Alt and drag it across. And when I let go, you can see my leaf has appeared. I'll leave this to the edge for one moment because we're going to now need to make a bunch of copies for the top acorns and leaves as well. So I'm just going to go through, click each one individually and hold the shift key while I'm doing so. And I'll leave out this end leaf. I'm then going to use the mirror selected objects tool. And then I'm going to have it create a mirrored copy and flip to the top. And after a moment, you can see my acorns and leaves have appeared up here. And then when I can close this out, I can then click on them to bring up the transformation handles and drag these down to roughly where they're going to need to be. So now if I go back into the modeling panel, you should see I have a number of copies of these different components. And now that we have all of these components, we need to do a bit of fine tuning to get them all to sit exactly where they need to be and interact with the models that are around them correctly as well. So let's start out with the leaf on the end here. So if I just select it, I'm just going to do a bit of a basic rotation to get started and then place it into the job roughly in the position it wants to be. I'm going to zoom in a bit on this in both the views. And as you can see, it's actually falling outside the material space slightly. So first of all, I want to reduce the size of this. So I can use the set size tool to do this. And I can just select on it and I'll just change the rough size of it to, let's say, uh, one inch and click apply. And as you can see, the leaf is now reduced in size nicely. Let's tweak the angle of it slightly more and then just move it down so that the tip of it is just touching the twig. And as you can see, it blends in all right there for me. So that's, that's a perfectly set leaf there. Next up, we just want to start looking at the leaves on the top and the bottom here. And as you can see, they are standing proud and overlapping here in a way that we wouldn't want them to. So let's click onto the bottom one as well. And we're just going to switch over to have a maximum size on the 2D view for the moment and just use this to change the shape and size of these leaves. I'm just going to use the transformation handles here to reduce the size of this leaf. And then let's see, let's move it just to here and rotate it down slightly so that the tip is only just brushing the, the twig here. We'll close the set size tool and we're also just going to change the combine mode for this leaf to be a merge. Then we'll do the same for the top leaf. So we'll select it and then we'll just check where we want it to be, which is roughly this location. So we'll move it there and then use the transformation handles to scale it down. So that's about the correct size. And then we can just rotate it, finish the positioning, and then we'll also switch this one over to a merging component. Then when we go back to the 3D view, you can see now they're both sitting quite nicely tucking into this twig where we want it to. So I'll just keep going down the line and just making some brief adjustments to all of these acorns and leaves to get them sitting a bit more in the exact positions I'm going to want them to be in and just rescale them slightly to make them fit a little bit better. As you can see though, in some cases, they're not blending in with the background elements of the, the rest of this design. So I'm going to have to make some more small tweaks and changes to this as I go forward. I'm just using the transformation handles here to do this quickly on the fly in the 3D view. And I'm just going to keep doing this for all of the components that I've created so far. So I'm just going to speed up this section as it's just using the same steps over and over to slightly tweak these things into the right positions to work on from now on. And there we go. We have completed the basic setup of all of our components here. Let's switch back to the 2D view to do a little bit more detailed work on this. So as you can see, I've got all my components here ready to work on. 
Let's go back to the left hand side and work our way down. Now, as I'm going to be adjusting 3D items, I really want to be able to see both the 2D and the 3D at the same time. So let's just arrange our views vertically so we can see both of them and just zoom in on the sections that we're going to be working on, primarily these three leaves to begin with. And the first thing we're going to do is to have the leaves stand out slightly more from the background. Now at the moment they're quite flat, uh, which uh, is perfectly fine, but what we want to do to give them a bit more depth without having them stand out above the twig here too much is select one of them, right click onto it to give us the option to go to its properties. You can also do this by double clicking the component name. Now we could just add a increased height to give it more depth. We could just add a base height to raise it up, but we don't want to do that in either of these cases. Instead, we're going to be using the tilt function here. So if I turn on tilt and then use the set, I can then click into the job where I want the tilt to be. So I want to click the lowest point of the design first, which is going to be the tip of this twig here. And then I just want to click where I want the tilt to go up to. So in this case, I'm just going to click halfway up the leaf. I'm then able to choose an angle for my tilt. And we don't want a huge angle, but a small three degree angle will give us a three degree rise on the leaf here. And if I move the view down, you can see now that it's got slightly thicker at this end. And the tilt really comes into effect here where it's joining into the twig. I can then do this for each of my three leaves. So let's go through each one. So let's select the bottom leaf here. And I want to just have it a bit thicker at the end here. So what I'll do is I'll turn on tilt again, use set, and then select where it's touching the twig and go all the way to the end this time. And then I'll just put on a, another, a small two degree tilt. There we go. And as you can see, it's also gained a bit of thickness there at the end without becoming too thick where it's touching the twig. Now moving down the workpiece slightly, I'm going to start looking at this first acorn. As you can see where it joins the twig, it's quite pronounced and we don't want it to be quite that pronounced. So what we want to do is use a bit of a fade on this one. So let's select our acorn and then we can use the fade just like we did with the tilt. If we turn it on, we can then select set and then we'll go to the point on the design where we want it to be at its 100% height. And then we'll drag out our line and then we'll select where we want it the most faded point of the component to be. In this case, the end of the stalk. And as you can see, the stalk has now faded down into the twig. We can increase or decrease this amount of fade. So at 100% fade, you can see it blends in completely. Whereas if I push it back down to 20%, it's had very little effect. Let's go with a medium effect. So let's go with say 72%. And as you can see, it goes in quite nicely there. If we do the same with our upper acorn, we want it to stand out a little bit, but not quite this much. So let's do the same again. So turn on fade, use set, select the point on the stalk where we want it to remain at its most high point, and then come down to select the end of the stalk where we want it to fade the most. And as you can see, it's blended it out quite nicely for us. So we'll leave that as it is, and we'll click close on the component properties. And by using these tools, you can blend your 3D components together more efficiently and get them to look much more natural together. This allows you to then create more detailed and intricate designs with all of these components joined together. So I'm just going to apply a couple more tilts and fades to some of these other components just to get a nice blending going on with them, such as this acorn here, which is standing out a little bit too proudly. So I'm just going to double click on it again use a fade, select set, and then just like before, fade it down into the branch a bit better. And I'm just gonna go through and do this with a couple more components as I go along before we move on to our next section in this tutorial. 
The leaves here look quite very good, so I won't change anything there. These ones, however, do look like they are sticking out a bit too much. So I think what I'll do here is select the leaf section, and I'm just going to apply a fairly aggressive tilt to the end of the stem here. So if I select fade, set, select the high point, select the low point, and then I'm going to push up the fade amount as high as it goes. One other thing I've got to keep an eye on is when I'm using all of these components together, some of them are still left as add components, whereas they should be merge components. So I must remember to make sure to select that to make sure that they are all merging together nicely. Let's select our last leaf. And we're just going to apply one more tilt so that the end of this leaf stands out a little bit more. Let's click set, click the tip of the leaf, and we'll just bring it back a touch into the main body of the leaf. And we'll just put in a one or two percent. And there you can see it's standing up just a little bit more to look nice with the edge there. So now that we've completed the setup of the basic components and added some tilting and fades to them, we can now join them all together into a single component. So let's close out with the component properties and then use the create component from visible model. As you can see, we've now got a copy of the visible model in our level one here. So let's just create an additional level by right clicking on the level name and then using insert new level. And then we'll just click and drag the copy of the visible model into the level two. We can then turn off level one so that all we are remaining with is our copy of the visible model, which is going to be our final piece. We now want to use some sculpting effects to try and finish off some of the blending and smoothing of this without having to apply a smooth to the entire component. Let's open up the 3D view to its maximum. And then we'll just scroll in and then we'll turn on the sculpting tools, which is found in the modeling panel up here. When we select the sculpt tool, it will use this component rather than creating a new component. And then we can just set our tools. We can change the strength of our tools so that we are just doing a light smoothing to some of these areas. And as you can see, it's working quite effectively by just using a low strength smoothing to all of these leaf veins. So now let's go into a uh, top down view. And then we can just use the twiddle view to zoom in a little bit so that we can see more closely what we're working on. So I'm just going to use a little bit more smoothing and we're just going to try and blend in each one of these little join sections a touch more. So we'll shrink down the scale of our tool as we don't want to overdo things. And then we can just, with it set to smooth still, just go around and just gently blend these together so that they don't have so much of a harsh join point between the two parts. And as you can see, with very little, little effort, we can get a perfectly smooth join section. And I'm just going to keep doing this over all of the little parts here until everything looks like it's joined together really nicely. Okay, so now that that's been completed, we're now ready to finish this off and do one last piece of this puzzle to get our final design. So I'm just going to click OK to close out of the sculpting tool. We'll go back to the 3D view and the 2D view combined. And I'm just going to select my 3D visible model. And I'm just going to rename this to branch one. I'm now going to then use the mirroring tool. And then I'm going to flip this horizontally about the job center by turning on the job center option. And as you can see, we've now got two parts that are nicely overlapping each other. So now we just want to get rid of this uh, overlapping merge part here in the center so that they're both interweaving with each other a bit more naturally. So I'm just going to go back into the options for my component here. I'm going to set it to merge as well to begin with. 
and then I'm going to click tilt and click set and then I'm just going to select the tip of the branch here and then bring it all the way down to the uh, the stem of it to use as my tilt point and then I'm just going to add in a very small tilt so 0.6 will probably do it here and if we then look at the 3D view from the side you can see now that it's overlapping it quite nicely without adding too much height to the right hand side component here so this looks good so we'll close out of our component options here and then with these two components I will select both of them and use my bake command to bake them together into a single component ready to export and use in my other projects. Let's open up 3D view to get a full look at the final piece and hide the modeling panel. As you can see, this looks very nice. And we've used quite a few skills and techniques here from for 3D modeling with the two rail sweep and create shape component to then combining them all together using some transform options to rescale the parts to fit correct positions for them in our design. And then we used tilts and fades to help blend them together before we then moved onto the sculpting tools to finish off a very smooth join for each one of these parts so that they look as natural as possible. And we then flipped it to create a mirrored section so that we have a nice symmetrical final design. And that marks the end of this tutorial. So I hope you've enjoyed it and we look forward to seeing you in the next video.